now let's move on to number eight. Uh, the next few problems are going to be pretty factoidal in nature, uh, but they are free response questions. You don't have multiple choice, so they are a little bit harder. Number eight, the electrons involved in the formation of a chemical bond are called okay, the electrons. We're talking about a specific type of electron here, and they're the type that are involved in formation of these chemical bonds. That is the valence electrons. Remember that only electrons in the outermost shell, okay, the outermost electrons are involved in chemical bonding. These are the interesting electrons, the electrons that do things with regard to chemistry reactions, okay, chemical reactions. These are the valence electrons. Number nine, a chemical bond that results in the electrostatic attraction between positive and negative ions is called, all right, so we're talking about a type of bond, okay, and it's between ions, positive and negative ions. The presence of this word ion here or presence of positive and negative identities allows you to conclude that this is going to be some sort of ionic bond. Okay. Flip it over, let's take a look at <coughs> number 10. Uh, if electrons involved in bonding spent more of the time closer to one atom rather than the other, the bond is... Okay. Now, we have to decode this a little bit, not all that much, but we have electrons involved in bonding spend most of the time closer to one atom rather than the other. Now, realize that this, closer to one atom than the other, is going to exclude the possibility of an ionic bond because in an ionic bond, uh, it's not closer to one atom rather than the other. It belongs to the other atom. Okay, it's not just leaning towards one side. It's been completely transferred. Ownership has changed. So if the electrons involved in bonding spend more time closer to one atom rather than the other, ionic is not even an option anymore. So we're really choosing between the two different types of covalent bond that we are, are aware of right now, and that's polar and nonpolar. And since we're not completely evenly shared, okay, uh, since we're not perfectly evenly shared, we're looking more like if I have these two atoms here. Uh, we don't have electrons right in the middle. They're going to be closer to one nucleus than the other. That's going to make this overall part of this molecule okay, partially negative, making this side partially positive. So when we have this arrangement, we call that a Polar co uh, whoa, that's not even close to the right spelling. What's going on here? Covalent. There we go. Okay. Polar covalent. If it was going to be a nonpolar covalent, these electrons wouldn't be over here closer to one atom or the other. They would be right smack dab in the middle. We call that uniform distribution of uh, electrical charge, but we don't have that when uh, the electrons are closer to one atom rather than the other. Number 11, if a bond's character is more than 50%, more than 50%, the bond is called an ionic bond. If you remember the journal prompt that we had a few periods ago, uh, I asked you to uh, identify the different electronegativity difference ranges uh, and then I associated those with uh, different percentages of ionic character. The most you can get, the most ionic you can get is anything above 50%. Anything above 50%, 60%, 70%, 90%, 98%. That's an ionic bond. That's a, you know a huge amount of ionic character. Number 12, a bond's character is more than 50% ionic if the electronegativity difference between the two atoms is greater than, and again, this refers basically to the same journal question, remembering and memorizing these electronegativity difference ranges. So I'm going to conclude that a bond is ionic, making the ionic character more than 50%, right? These are the same things, saying the same, same type of information. 
if the electronegativity difference is greater than, so it's not asking for the range, just anything greater than, and the number is 1.7, right? Because remember, the range is 1.71 to 4, right? So anything above the 1.7, you're going to be in the ionic character category. Number 13, uh, write the formula for an example of each of the following compounds. So we have all three of the different types of compounds that we've covered so far. We have nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, and then ionic. Now we're going to reverse engineer some differences here. It's still going to be easiest for some of these if you get out uh, your notes and you have access to this electronegativity difference, or sorry, electronegativity value periodic table in your notes. Make sure you have that available. Nonpolar covalent, nonpolar covalent. That is going to be our difference between uh, zero and point three. The easiest way to do a nonpolar covalent is pick one of the elements that are in Brinkelhoff. Bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, because those are going to be diatomic molecules, and so they're going to be bonding with their self. Absolutely zero electronegativity difference, so I'll just pick bromine 2. Right? That is uh, the bromine molecule. That is going to be a nonpolar covalent bond. Now when I go to pick a polar covalent bond, I need to have an electronegativity difference somewhere between 0.3 and 1.7. So I can do some choosing here. So I'm going to go to this periodic table that's in my notes. I just need to pick something that's going to give me that difference. And it doesn't matter. There are a whole bunch of options to choose from here. Um, so if I went with the most electronegative uh, atom here be fluorine. And if I need an electronegativity difference of uh, somewhere between uh, 0.3 and 1.7, uh, let's just say, I don't know, pick a number in that range, 1, 1 1.0. Let's find another atom that's going to give me an electronegativity difference of 1.0. Uh, I would, if I'm starting with 4.0 in fluorine, I would need a 3.0. Look, there's a 3.0 right here, nitrogen. So I'll... Right, have a have a bond between uh, uh, nitrogen and fluorine. Okay, that would be that would be a bond here. But I just realized that I read this problem wrong. This is a this is a compound. I need a compound. That's just a bond. That's not a compound. Goodness gracious! The teacher doesn't even read the questions. Okay, so we need something that's going to uh, uh, form a substance here. Uh, Let's go. I need something with seven valence electrons and then one valence electron to make it easier. Uh, let's go. Oh, chlorine with 3.0. Hydrogen with 2.1. Let's do that. This is a hydrochloric acid. Everybody loves acid. Hydrochloric acid. That's going to be a difference of the 3.0 minus 2.1. That's going to give me a 0 0.9. That's pretty close to the 1.0 that I wanted. But that's going to put it in the polar covalent category. Uh, ionic compound. I just need to pick a metal and a non-metal. Anything. I, to be honest, perfectly honest, I don't even need to use this electronegativity difference periodic table. I just need to pick a metal and a non-metal. Um, table salt. Everyone, I, I love table salt. Right? Love that sodium chloride. Boom. That's my ionic compound. It's a combination of a metal and a non-metal. And if you want to double check, just for completeness sake, chlorine coming in at 3.0, sodium coming in at 0.9. Let's see if this difference ends up being over 1.7. Looks like it's 2.1, which is well over 1.7. That's going to put it in the ionic category.